How's everyone doing? This is Dan from Red, White, and Q. Welcome to my day off. Like, I hope people don't think this is sacrilege, like people that dab grease off of their pizza. Today I'm going to be canning, uh, pressure canning 15 pounds of bacon. I want you to know we would never dab grease off of pizza. We're not, we're not those kinds of people. We're not monsters. Alright, it's such a beautiful day out. We're going to do everything in our backyard today. So, we got our, our Blackstone griddle there. We're going to be able to put on a pound of bacon and that's what we're going to do at a time. We're going to do a pound, pound and a quarter, about 14 strips. That's what's going to fit into a pint jar. And we're going to do 15 pint, uh, pounds in pint jars and then we're going to can them and have them ready to go. Alright, I'm going to check her out. See how we're looking here underneath. There we go, getting some nice color here, getting a little crisp. But remember, when you take it off too, it's going to continue to cook. So you don't want to get it crispy because if you get it crispy, it's going to break when you fold it and roll it. We're back. Now, <laughs> got this bacon I'm ready to pull up here. I'm going to put it on my tray. It's got a paper towel. And I'm going to splot it down with more paper towels. Try to get as much grease as you can off. Um, just makes it easier and a little bit less messy for you. Now, with anything, when we're cooking bacon, I like to cook my bacon, you know, on a medium medium to medium low heat. I like to uh, go, uh, you know, cook it longer. It just strains more of that grease out. And then you're going to get a, just a nice crispy bacon. Alrighty. Now to splotch it. Try. I got your piece. Chill out. We're back. <laughs> I'm here to splotch it down, get that off that excess grease. Just got a couple paper towels folded up here. And I give it a little bacon CPR. Heel, 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 Oh, you got a piece coming, buddy. You just chill out. I got a piece. You don't like his grease off it too much. You like his grease. <laughs> okay. So now that it's like cool to the touch, and I can grab it without burning myself. And I like, took off all the extra. I'm gonna line them up on our parchment paper. So about 18 inches. I'm kind of using this like board as a as a guide. This little piece of cardboard down here. Because everything's gonna get greasy. Regular old fashioned parchment paper. Compostable. Okay, so we're gonna lay out all the bacon strips and uh, we're kinda gonna go one at a time. It doesn't really uh, matter exactly which way you lay them as long as you can get them all in a nice uh, line and you can kind of uh, get a little artistic with it. Kind of fitting together so one isn't overlapping the other one too much and close to the edge. So basically as close to the top as you can kind of get them um, and then leaving yourself about like two inches of space. So what you'll see will fold it over afterwards and you're gonna need that. Okay, so we're gonna just kind of uh, lay it out here. And then, uh, you know, you'll notice the, great, the bacon is not super crispy. So you want it to be kind of malleable because we're gonna be rolling this up and putting it in a jar. Kind of overlapping is okay. Shingling is good. So we can fit them all. <laughs> all right, so now that we're all kind of laid out and I'm feeling good about that, um, we're gonna make make the envelope. Hold the, uh, the bacon in half, like 
if it's a little crispy, maybe like break it up with like a tiny little bit. Don't tell your husband that you're breaking it up a little bit. Just kind of crack it. <laughs> crispy pieces are great too. <laughs> and um, you're gonna just try to fold it in half. Pretty much fold it right in half up until the tip. And just, that's just the tip. Just the tip, though. And that should be enough. That should be enough. So, I mean, you know, no big deal. If it's like a little bit too long, just do it again and slip. So we're gonna seal it, make sure the crease is there because it's gonna make it easier to roll. Um, and now we're gonna roll this up and put it, put it inside of a jar. pounds of bacon we did. Now I've got the, you know, since it was a hot pack, so you want to start with hot jars and hot lids, and you're going to go into a warm can. That way you don't shock the glasses and break. But you know what? I'm not a cannon expert. Do your due diligence. We ended up with 13 um, pints of bacon, which 15 pounds, so we did a little bit over a pound in each one. So I got my first eight down there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the lid. Now, before I get into this, we're going to do pressure can these since they're pint jars for 75 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. You have to pressure can any meat. You can't do it in a hot water bath or, or anything else so it's to be safe. So what we got to do is we have to line up our lines here. And this one is just going to line up. And then I put my lashes on. You want I do, um, I'm going to get our stove on uh, high. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for pressure to start building in there. And I'm going to see that it's venting out of here. When it's venting for 10 minutes, then we're going to put our pressure gauge on. And that's when our timer is going to start. So we'll be back when it comes back to uh, when it's venting. Cut. Action. And we're back. <laughs> All right. So this guy has been venting for about 10 minutes. It's got a vent. You can hear it. You can see I don't know if you can see it. I definitely feel it. It's hot, hot, hot. And that's been going for about Show 10 minutes. Show us how minutes. hot it is. Oh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> hot. Okay, so that thing's ready to go. So now what we're going to do is, I'm going to go over here. And you got your weight. Now, we are below sea level, or a thousand feet or less below sea level. So we're going to do 10 pounds of pressure. It's on your little knobby here. Um, different canners are different. So if you have a different one, just read the instruction and we'll figure it out. Go on YouTube. So we're just going to drop that part of you right there. And when it starts to jiggle and wiggle and make noise, that's when we're going to start our time. So remember, we did pint jars, pint sized jars. So we're going to do, um, it's going to be 75 minutes. That's when it starts jiggling and wiggling and making noise. Wow. We're going to do 75 minutes. And this thing that keeps burning me is our, I'll show you here what we got here. This is my uh, pork uh, bone broth that we've been, it's been cooking for shit three days now. It's, you know, all the bones that we use from um, our pork shoulders at our restaurant, Red Wing Q Smokehouse, Kearney, New Jersey. Just throw a bunch of these bones in here that I save for about three or four days. 
and a bunch of vegetables and I just uh, fill it up with water and let that uh, simmer and cook down for three days and we make our own um, our stock we do with our chicken bones from the work we do with our our beef bones our beef rib bones so we make our own uh, beef stock you know bone broth we just do that you know and so if you guys need some bones let me know I get some bones come pick them up at my restaurant but yeah we love to do that and then you can just see how you know when you're cooking them for three days how how nice and dark and just delicious that looks so today after our, after we can this my bacon my next job is to um, to strain my uh, bone broth and Um, Rub up and can that, and put that on the shelf, and now I've got, uh, I'll get probably seven or eight quarts of uh, pork broth, you know, canned, ready to go for any recipes, for any soups I want to make. So, it's really, just reusing everything is really what uh, my wife Katie and I are really trying to do, is just trying to have a little bit less waste and see what we can upcycle and what we use. Um, we'll go down in the bee garden here on uh, one of these uh, next episodes and show all of our... Uh, you know, stuff that we upcycled from our house and junk in our yard that we had stashed away and stuff and just made like a beautiful garden for our beehives that we have. So, really looking forward to that. So, this guy is starting to get ready to jiggle. You can see he's starting to, you know, spread out a little steam there. So, we'll come back when he's, uh, after he's been, you know, jiggling and wiggling for 75 minutes and he's ready to go. We'll show you what the end product's going to look like. Okay, our 35 minutes is up. Now I'm going to show you what we have to do. So, so you can see that our pressure is riding at about 240. And that's, um, and that's the rattling I was talking so much about. So after that is done, after your time is done, you're going to have to cut off the, the heat. And you're going to naturally let it come down through pressure. So you want to just... Turn off the, the stove, walk away. And then when it's down to zero, there's no pressure, then you can open up the canner and then we'll see our glorious bacon. And we're back. Okay, so now it has decompressurized, maybe, if that's what you want to call it. It's down to zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open this bad boy up. Here we go. Bacon. Canned. Now we're going to set it on our mat. I want to move it around. If you do a raw dog, you're gonna have grease up to there, you know, and it's so much grease. And the great thing about this parchment paper, it's filled with grease now from the bacon. So after you uh, after you open it and use it, it's gonna be messy, so be careful. You're gonna keep that parchment paper, you're gonna dry it out, you know, let it dry, and then that's uh, perfect to start fires with. Great for the restaurant, great for your fireplace, wh wherever you need to start a fire real quick. There you go. We got a uh, bacon in a can. Big up. Eat some bacon.